So blow-by gases are a problem on all engines, not just the N54 in this E90 BMW behind me, and you need a way to recycle those blow-by gases back into the intake manifold so that they get burned off by the engine. This is typically called PCV, or positive crankcase ventilation. Those systems employ a check valve, and that check valve could become clogged over time. It could either get stuck shut or stuck open, and that'll seriously degrade the performance of that system. So they make aftermarket um, PCV valves for this engine, and in this video, we're gonna install this. And if you stick around afterwards, I will talk about the common failures and uh, how the system works and all that uh, techie stuff. So anyway, let's get started. So if you've been watching any of my videos for the past year, you've seen me remove all these common components several times, so I'm not gonna cover it again in this video. Instead, I will put a link in the description to a video that shows you exactly how to remove all these components, but let's get the, uh, the, the engine cover off. Okay, that's better. So here is the uh, PCV system on the N54 engine. It's actually built into the top of the valve cover, and that little uh, check valve is actually in here and it just unscrews. There's a little, little cover that unscrews right here. So we're gonna unscrew that and take the valve out and put the new one in. We'll, uh, we'll get this off and then I'll talk about how the system works and everything. All right, so it's actually a 13 millimeter wrench like that and we're just going to unscrew it. See, the fact that I can torque it a little bit means that I think the threads are out. Yeah, it's loose. There it is. So I do believe we need to release the bigger cap in order to get this uh, smaller one out. So um, <clears throat> normally you would just sort of, you know, and it's got, I think it's got the catches on the top there. It looks like there's, a, there's one on the top and then one on the bottom. So we would probably need a little pick tool or something to kind of get both. So let's see what I can do here. All right, so <laughs> I need to put the camera down. This is uh, one of those things. All right, I was able to get that off right there, uh, just how I said, and now this cap can come off. Uh, incidentally, I am gonna be replacing this line as well. I'll explain why. Um, in a bit, but here the PCV valve is, the old one is here, and I was just able to pull that right out, okay? So that's it right there. And there's also an O-ring in here that uh, should go on this cap here. So that will have to get out as well, and um, I, don't have a, I don't have one to replace that, so I have to be really careful about it, so. I'm probably, I think it's right here on the edge, right on the lip. There it is. Boom. And it still feels good. So I'm going to put that on the cap. And you can easily see how you install the new valve, I think. You know, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So, all right, now let's talk about how this PCV system works because it's actually a little bit, it's, it's pretty different from a normal PCV system because this car is turbocharged. So um, a normal PCV system, you have uh, intake manifold vacuum being applied to the valve cover. Okay, that's gonna suck out the blow-by gases at the right moment. And the way that works is that, the way the check valve works in that situation is under high vacuum, which is at idle whenever the throttle body's closed, that check valve is actually going to suck shut and it's going to prevent anything from getting sucked out of the valve cover, right? And then when the, when the, um, the throttle valve opens, the vacuum drops and that check valve will actually open up and that's when the blow-by gases can actually flow into the intake, which makes sense because that's when you're producing more blow-by gases when the engine is at speed, right? That you're going to be producing the most blow-by gases. That's on a naturally aspirated car. On this car, that actually wouldn't work because um, if it was drawing out the uh, vapors from the, crank, the, the valve cover while the throttle valve was open, that actually wouldn't work because it, that's when your boost is highest, right? So you don't actually have a vacuum in the engine, you have boost, you have an overpressure in the engine. So your boost would actually leak back into the valve cover and that would be bad. So on this system, 
it's reversed. That means that the crankcase vapors can only flow out of this engine of, of this uh, PCV valve, and, the, and then boost cannot flow backwards into the, the valve cover. So this check valve is, is basically a one-way valve going, uh, going out this way. It will let vapors come out this way. It'll let the vacuum suck out this way. It will not let the boost push this way. See, actually, this is, this is the little passage where all those uh, um, the, the crankcase vapors get by the PCV, the PCV valve and they go through this little passage and they go through channels that are down in here that, are, that lead to the intake manifold down here. So um, all of the oil separation is done up here. The blow-by gases come up here. They're supposed to come up through these passages and then you know, condense on the walls of these uh, cyclone you know, chambers right here. You got four of them. So the, those, the oil is supposed to condense on there and then drip back into the engine and only the vapors are supposed to get through to right here. So that's actually on the low side. Whenever the engine is um, idling, when the vacuum is high in the intake manifold, that's when the valve is actually gonna be open and it's gonna be sucking the blow-by vapors through this metered orifice. So it'll come out here and go through here and back into the intake manifold to get burned off. That's when the, the idle is, that's when the, the vacuum is high, which is when the engine is idling or when it's decelerating. But when you're accelerating, that's when the vacuum is low and when the boost pressure is actually high, that's when you want this check valve to actually close off. You don't want the boost gases to be, the, the boost pressure to be leaking back into the valve cover because uh, that would be really bad, right? So that's a check valve, and it's really important that that check valve closes off and stays closed to prevent a boost leak from going into the valve cover. Now, when you're, when you're actually accelerating and you're you know, in that condition where the, the, this check valve is closed, there still needs to be a way for those blow-by gases to escape because uh, you know, you're under, you know, this check valve is closed, it's preventing boost from getting in here, but you're still producing more blow-by gases. In fact, at higher engine speeds, that's when you're producing the most blow-by gases. So they need a way to escape in that case, and that's through the high side escape. That's what they call the high side. This is the low side, this is the high side. So there's actually a check valve in here, it's normally closed, and there's normally a little, uh, a little orifice that kind of meters um, so like a, a controlled leak so because because normally when uh, whenever the low side is open and it's sucking vacuum if this was completely closed off and it was applying full vacuum to the valve cover that would actually uh, cause a vacuum leak you know because usually the valve covers um, the valve cover gasket goes bad over time and so that would actually be kind of a vacuum leak so they they, they there's actually a controlled orifice there's a, a small hole p permanently inside here and it, that, that just allows some, uh, um, some air to kind of leak into the valve cover so that you don't apply full vacuum to it. But uh, whenever, we're, whenever the low side is shut and the engine's accelerating and there is excessive boost pressure and it's shutting and it's keeping that boost pressure from going into the valve cover, like I said, all the blow-by gases are going to be going out the high side in that case. So there's a check valve in there that opens up and it allows the vapors to be recycled back into the rear inlet, which is right here. And this, this thing right here is actually just a heater to make sure that um, none of the, the water that condenses in here uh, freezes and stuff. So that keeps it warm. So that's how that whole system works. And the problems with this system occur when this check valve doesn't shut all the way anymore. And that prevents the, uh, that, will prevent, that will not prevent the boost from leaking back into the valve cover, right? And then what, think about what happens in that situation. If there's excessive boost pressure leaking through that PCV valve getting into the valve cover, that's actually gonna be forcing a lot more of the oil and, and vapors out of the engine and, in, and to be recycled into the engine, I should say, out of the valve cover to be recycled back into the engine. And that's the problem. That's what causes all that excessive oil to build up in the intake track and then eventually get, make its way into the intercooler and then get sucked back up into the charge pipe and stuff. We saw some evidence of that uh, when we uh, took the, the engine apart and did the walnut blasting last week. So that is uh, what I think is happening with this engine or suspect is happening. And the way we can test that is to test that PCV valve and see if it's shutting. So. Here's the new valve. All valves should rattle if they're not stuck, okay? And the old valve also rattles. I think you guys can hear that. So it's not stuck open, which is good. 
Now, a new valve, a good valve, again, it's a one-way valve that prevents the boost from leaking past it and going back into the valve cover. So if I blow this way, it should not go through, and it does not. The new valve is completely closed, but you can hear it's open. So if I blow this way, there actually is air getting through. Not a lot, not a whole ton. Now, this valve, since it's oily, I'm not gonna put my lips on it, but if we plug a tube into it and try to blow through, you can hear that I'm able to blow through it, which means that's your boost pressure. That's all your boost going back into the valve cover and forcing more vapors and stuff back, in, back out of that big hose and recycling it back into the rear inlet. So that's what's happening. So we're gonna install this aftermarket valve and that should uh, hopefully solve the problem. Now, I'm a little bit concerned that not a lot is actually blowing out the other way. Right, so this thing actually comes off in the back right here. So, it, you know, it's kind of a little loose, which is, I guess it's all right. It was a little concerning at first, but see now I tightened it a little bit more and it wasn't as good. So the more I tighten it, sort of the more, the more I see. Now this thing was not tight when I got it and maybe it's not supposed to be tight, but uh, that seems to me to be sort of strange and not great. So this is just a generic eBay one that I ordered, you know, a CNC one, but uh, I don't love it. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't, I don't exactly love it. It does shut, but it doesn't let, it doesn't have a big opening the other way. So I think I might source an even better one. But I think we can run with this because this is not going to back out. I mean, there's nowhere for it to go. So I think maybe I can leave it a little bit loose like it was when I got it. And it, I think it'll be all right. So nothing goes that way. And a lot goes that way. So here's something interesting. You see the shape of the old valve. It's very thin all the way through here. The new valve has this, um, this shoulder on it. So this, this one fits in like that. This one does not exactly fit in, and it looks like I'm gonna to need to modify things just a little bit now. So I'm sure the, the origin of this part is that some American company designed it, and they probably designed a, a replacement cap to be used with it as well. And then probably the Chinese company just started manufacturing them out the back door, and that's why we have a bunch of different uh, valves just flooding eBay, right? So I guess I didn't get the cap, and if I wanna reuse the old cap, I might have to modify it a little bit and just shave down the, the little shoulders of it, but that's fine. So I'm gonna do that and get this thing to fit. So all I had to do was just barely shave down one or two of the little sides there, just a little tiny bit, and this thing pops in now, so no big deal. Oh, you might be asking yourself, if I unscrewed this cap a little bit, why don't we actually just take a look at what this looks like inside while, while we're at it? It's very simple, very simple system. All it is is there's a spring right here and this little plunger, the little plunger is tapered and there's this, you know, it's uh, it kind of fits into the passage in there. That's not what seals it though. That's what actually opens it. When it's sucked in this way, that's when it's open. The ceiling is there. This little plunger is just sitting back against the, the bottom in there. So it doesn't matter how much I unscrew this, that's where the seal happens, which is kind of nice. So, uh, it, it, again, it's strange to me that you would need to sort of unscrew this in order to uh, open it up and, and get a little more airflow. So, <laughs> I don't know, man, but uh, I think it'll be fine like that. It should be fine. And like I said, I'll probably get another PCV valve. I know there's a couple of different people who make them and stuff. So I'll probably get another one and throw it in just because of this. But for the purposes of finishing this video, I'm going to put this one in. But I definitely know this one seals. So it's, I'm confident in it. It's definitely going to seal the boost from getting back into the valve cover. All right, so I got it back in. Uh, we didn't need to see me screw a bolt back in or screw a cover back in, but it's back in. I didn't go too crazy tight with it. Now, let's change this back hose as well. And that one, again, the catches are up here. 
right here, that's the catch, and then there's a similar one down below. So this being an old hose, I don't mind breaking it like that. It'll just be that much easier to get off. So that's what I'm doing. Like that. And you can see lots of uh, oil wetness on it right there, there as well. Let's get the new one on. Boom, there we go. And more evidence that uh, this is the primary source of uh, oil getting into the system. You can see just a little oil leaked out right onto my uh, rubber pad right here while this thing was sitting here. So that is uh, that is the exit of all that oil. I kind of want to see more is getting off. Um, I kind of want to open this up to show you what the, the check valve looks like inside. Maybe I'll spend some time to see if I can cut this open. So here's the flapper valve. I pulled this part off and when it's in the car, it's sort of in this orientation. So the, uh, the flapper valve should sort of normally want to fall closed like that, right? Now, here is that, uh, that metering hole that I was talking about. You see the little hole down inside there? That's what's relieving the vacuum on the valve cover uh, when this thing is normally shut. And that's what, that's what prevents you know, the, the full vacuum of the intake manifold being applied to the valve cover. A little bit is leaking, a little bit of air is leaking from the intake pipe, the, the rear inlet, and uh, relieving some of that vacuum pressure. So yeah, that is uh, how that works. And uh, this obviously wasn't clogged, closed, or anything like that. So to sum up my thoughts about this whole thing, I wanna say that blow-by happens on the car that blow-by needs to be recycled into the intake manifold and ultimately get back into the engine. That's, that's how it is. It's part of the design of the engine and there's no way to stop it or avoid it. That's ultimately what, what gunks up the intake valves and that's why you need to clean them with uh, you know, the walnut cleaning every 50,000 miles. There's really no way to avoid that, but the excessive oil that you sometimes find in the intake track and in the charge pipe, that is being caused by a PCV valve that is not shutting under boost. If it's not shutting under boost, that those boost pressures are gonna get into the valve cover. They're going to pop out of the valve cover, out of the uh, high side valve, which is this guy right here. And that's gonna take a lot of oil with it. That oil is gonna wind up in the rear inlet, which is gonna make its way into the uh, intercooler, pass the intercooler into the charge pipe and go back into the intake manifold. That is the only way that oil is going to get into those charge pipes other than I suppose the turbo seals leaking. <clears throat> so that's what's causing that problem. It's just this, uh, this check valve that's not doing its job. So replace it, the problem should be solved as long as it's not being caused by the turbos. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm the 50s kid, thanks a lot for watching.